to talk uh, about some of the individual solutions, some of the things that people say, even if we've given up on our po politicians, um, even if we've given up on some of our institutions, perhaps there are things that as individuals we can do to combat, uh, to combat climate change. Um, so of course the, the goal that's set out is to reduce carbon emissions uh, to two tons of CO2 per person by the year 2050, right? So um, there, there are lots that we do. We actually skipped a part of the presentation about, um, about how to calculate this. But um, uh, so uh, our goal is to have one person emitting two tons of CO2. This is sustainable. This allows for um, the natural habitat to absorb a lot of this carbon. Um, so in the U.S., and in Australia, well, each person is currently producing about 16 tons of carbon. So we need to somehow cut our, far, our carbon footprint by one in, in one sixteenth, oh, one eighth, in one eighth, uh, to get to two, two tons per person per year. Um, so there are loads of individual solutions that, that we can do for this. One, uh, I hope that everybody can pull out your cell phones right now. And uh, instead of using Google, you could use Ecosia. Now, Ecosia is just like Google. It's a search browser, but every bit of revenue that they make, to, that they make on these searches, it goes towards planting trees. Um, and uh, according to Ecosia, here it says uh, 10 million, but according to the, the most recent figures from... Uh, I think it was uh, October of this year, they said they've planted more than 42 million trees already using Ecosia. So please do set this as your primary search engine. Um, next is definitely changing our transportation habits. I know most of us in this room, I think, um, are expats and maybe flying to and from our home country. Um, if that's what our life is, it's what we need to do, but it's just important to remember that uh, according to the IPCC, uh, the only sustainable goal is two tons per person per year. One flight from New York to Hanoi is 2.6 tons of CO2. One flight from London to Hanoi is 1.8 tons of CO2. From Cape Town, another 2.2. From Sydney, 1.5. So it's incredibly important that we pay attention to the number of flights that we're taking. Um, this, uh, I, I don't want to say the exact figure here, but there have been comparisons made of this being just loads uh, of more carbon, um, if you were just to reduce your flights, um, one flight would be worth years of being a vegan. It was either one year or maybe two years. I don't want to quote an exact figure here. Um, of course, also, I think the number is that about 80% of carbon emissions come from something like 20% of companies. Um, so if we can just su stop supporting these polluting companies, um, that would be phenomenal. Um, also, buying carbon offsets and being a vegan. There's a, there's a great resource online called your footprint calculator, your carbon footprint calculator, where you can find out how much carbon you produce as an individual and what you can do, what organizations you can donate to to offset your your own carbon footprint. In addition, the one that I think is probably the most um, divisive is antinatalism. So antinatalism is where you believe that it is cruel to bring another human being into the world. So you choose to not have children. And you believe that this is cruel either because of the amount of suffering that this child will have to go through or because of the amount of suffering that this child will have to cause in their lifetime just to stay alive. Um, it's been calculated that one child produces nearly 60 tons of carbon every single year, 30 times uh, the IPCC maximum. Um, so there's an entire organization called the Voluntary Human Extinction Movement. Has anybody, anybody heard of this before already? Yeah. So um, the V-H-E-M-T, it's pronounced vehement. Uh, <laughs> And um, th they say that they say that they're, they're not childless because that sounds like a real demotion, but instead they're child free. Um, and th they recognize that there is a limited carrying capacity of the whole earth. Um, and there was a professor named David Pymont um, at. 
Cornell University, who said that in order to sustain comfortable living in the world, we really cannot exceed about 2 billion people, right? Right now, we're more than 7 billion people in the world. Govinda showed a chart. I think it's projected by the year 2050, we're going to be hitting more than 11 billion people in the world. Um, I mean, it's just just unbelievable, right? Um, So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people that say that this is the solution. Uh, 2050 is the projection. 2050, 2050. Uh, it could be. It could be later than that. Um, uh, it, I, I'm sure that it depends on what source you consult. Actually, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't have a. Uh, I, I, that's not even in the slide, so I don't have a source for it. Yeah, that's just from what I've seen. Uh, here we go. Okay. Yeah. So ah, 2100. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So by 2100, we're looking at something like 11.2 billion. Uh, 2050, it's looking like yeah, nine and a half billion. Yeah, you're right. Um, so. This red line is the uh, the growth, um, the percentage growth per year. So we are seeing quite a decrease in the percentage growth per year, um, but also the overall number of people just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now that was just, this last slide was just since the 1700s, but if we look back uh, to something like 10,000 years ago and we see the population of humanity, nothing, 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 nothing. About 3,000 years ago we begin this spurt and then right Right around the middle, uh, how can I say this, right around the, f- the 1600s, we just see this incredible acceleration in the number of human beings in the world. Um, so there are different ways that we can compare the effectiveness of different measures to reduce your own carbon footprint. Um, this is uh, according to the... An- uh, uh, so antinatalists would cite this, um, would cite this study. Um, this comes from Wines and, and Nichols from the Environmental Research Letters. Um, they said that if you look... Uh, if you live car free, um, then you might reduce your carbon footprint by, by about two and a half tons. Um, if you avoid transatlantic flights, then it's about 1.6, what we saw earlier. Um, you know, you can go all around, all around, all around, but there is nothing that's nearly, nearly as effective at reducing your own carbon footprint as not having children. Now, I personally am not swayed by this argument. Um, I am not. Uh, an antinatalist. Um, so there are definitely arguments against antinatalism. First of all, they say that it's a self-eliminating ideology. That is, if all of the antinatalists, who are people who clearly care a lot about environmental causes, if all of these people end up not having children, then this is actually really dangerous for environmental protection and for future generations. Um, and then second, um, if we were to reduce global population um, by antinatalism, this would take centuries, but we actually need a reduction in carbon right now. So the last question that I have for us here tonight, guys, and then I think we'll call it an ad for this, is should we stop driving gas-fueled cars and motorbikes? Should we become vegans? Should we not have children? And if, like the poet suggested, we're all just cancers, should we kill ourselves? All right, uh, so we'll, we'll take about five, ten minutes for this one, and then we'll come back. We'll hear from James. Um, maybe we'll hear from one more person, and then we're going to call it a night. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you. Go for it.